everyone, this is Rachel from Sunbear Glasscraft, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this fern pattern. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to say thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. It really means the world to me. If you like today's video and find it helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you're not already, and I also have my Patreon and PayPal below if you'd like to help support me in that way. I have all sorts of fun goodies on my Patreon, and under the Ursa Major tier, I have two stained glass patterns per month that you can vote on at the beginning of every month, so check it out, the link will be down below. I'll be using the program Clip Studio Paint, and the first thing you always want to do is start a new canvas. I generally like to work with a 12 by 12 canvas, and I like to make sure that the color of the canvas is kind of like an off-white gray, just so my eyes don't feel strained. Now I don't use all of the bells and whistles of Clip Studio Paint, but the most common things that I use to make my patterns are the under the pencil tool, the brush tool specifically as well as, of course, the eraser. So first I'm gonna go to pencil, and my friend gave me this awesome brush, and then you can see all the settings that you can do here. The most important is going to be this stabilization setting. Generally what I like to do is turn stabilization off whenever I'm doing my initial outline. I call it my ugly layer, and then I turn it on for when I'm doing the pretty clean outlines. So you can see I turned my stabilization off and you can see how much different it looks and how it kind of um, makes the writing more real time versus if the stabilization is super high, it makes it very sluggish, but it makes your lines very smooth. Generally when I'm working with stabilization, I don't like to put it this high. I think I usually have it in the 40s to 50s, maybe 60s, but no higher than that. I don't know what that metric means, but for me it's just a little too uh, sluggish if it's that much higher. And then here you can see that I'm going to go ahead and go to the eraser tool and what's kind of fun about Clip Studio Paint is it has very similar hotkeys as uh, Photoshop. So for the paint brushes that I use, you can just type P on your keyboard and it'll cycle through. And if you type E, it'll go to the eraser tool and you can program all of the hotkeys yourself. So first things first, we need to make our new layer and you can come over here to the layers panel and hit that little icon that I hit. And usually what I do is I have an ugly air quotes layer first and I always like to turn on the grid, which can be accessed through view going down to grid. Once I have my canvas set up, my first thing that I like to do is make the border of my actual project. If you use the figure tool, which is the hotkey, the letter U, you can make straight line curves, different sorts of rectangles and circles and all sorts of things. So I like to use this straight line tool and I have an idea in my head, I'm, I'm not quite certain what that is yet, but it's going to be some sort of like five-sided shape. This is why the grid is so important for me because otherwise my shapes would be all wonky, but this allows me to line everything up perfectly. Once I have my border decided, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and label it. Labeling is very important and I'm going to call it Ugly Fern. And this is where I'm just gonna go in, I'm not gonna worry about how it looks. I'm just gonna get the basic shape in, I'm gonna get the idea going. Um, that's really how I make all of my designs is I have kind of an idea in my brain and then I just try to get it on paper or on screen. <laughs> If I'm uncertain of an element that I'm going to be adding, then I'll start a new layer. So this is like one of those curly fern things that like the, the unfurled fern. Um, and I was just trying this out. I ended up not liking how this looked, but this is why I like having air quotes ugly layers, just so you can get the ideas down and you can just play with ideas and figure it out as you go. An element that I did know for certain that I wanted was for there to be a moon and some stars because I've been really enjoying playing with that sort of style of stained glass. So I went ahead and added the eclipse tool and added a circle onto its own layer. And what you're going to be seeing me doing here is trying to find the composition of the piece. I use the transform tool a lot, which on PC is control T. On Max, I'm sure it's like shift command T just because they like to be special and have that shift command thing. But this allows me to kind of drag it around, um, scale it, make it bigger, smaller, rotate it. And this is what helps me find composition in my pieces. 
At this point I wasn't really liking how the whole piece looked so I figured it was probably the border. So I decided that an oval shaped border instead of like a square or pentagonal uh, shape would be better. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the ellipse tool, change the aspect ratio so it's an oval and I really felt like this helped bring the piece together and make it flow better. At this point, I think I just abandoned the idea of having the little curled fern, so I went ahead and started with the stars. And same thing as with the beginning of the fern pieces, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace them in. They don't have to be pretty, I just wanna get the composition down. Once I have the rough outline looking how I want it, I will go ahead and lower the opacity and then I'll create a new layer, usually one that I label as the pretty layer, and that's when I'll go ahead and start tracing in my clean outline. This is when I turn on my brush stabilization. So I generally don't like to have the brush stabilization on for the ugly outline or rough sketch, but then I will turn it up whenever I go ahead and make the pretty outline. For geometric shapes such as my stars, I like to use the symmetrical ruler tool where there's only two lines and there is a line of symmetry and this just allows me to have a perfect mirrored image of whatever I'm drawing. So it gives a nice geometric feel without losing the organic feeling if that makes sense. Alternatively, you could also use the figure tool and use the curved line tool to make your stars, but I prefer to just draw everything with my pen tablet. It's super important too to work smarter, not harder, and you can just copy and paste your layers, especially for tiny things like this, so you can just control C and control V. Now that we have the pretty outline and the composition mostly figured out, you're going to still see me mess with the composition quite a bit. Uh, I like to go in and make what I call the glass lines or the break lines. Unless you have a ring saw, this sort of piece that's on the edge between the fern and the right side of the oval is going to be almost impossible to make. I don't even think that I would want to deal with that headache. So as you can see, I'm making all of the glass lines or break lines just so you have some separation and you're not having these pieces with crazy concave bits in them. When you're making your break lines too, it's more visually interesting, at least in my opinion, to not just have them be straight lines from the fern to the border. I like to keep them kind of curved with the fern, um, make it go with the way that each individual leaf is pointing, and it kind of just helps your eyes make it feel like it's more organic instead of there being like 70 different pieces. I definitely had a hard time figuring out the composition for the stars and the moon, so that's what you're gonna see me kind of struggle bus with, with the break lines, the stars and the moon over the next little bit here. The way that I'm making these break lines on each point of the star is I'm using my straight line tool, and before I actually draw the line, I'm pressing shift, which allows it to snap to the horizontal or vertical axis.
the final steps for the outline, at least for me, is going to be coloring. So I create a new layer all the way at the bottom, label it color, and this is going to help me visualize colors as well as my clients if I'm doing this for a commission. And finally, after I color my piece, I'll go ahead and go in and number everything. Now that this outline is finished, we want to go ahead and save as, save it as a Clip Studio file and save it as a PNG. I personally like to make sure the PNG or JPEG, you can use either one, is just the numbered, no colored version. So what you see right now, this is what I save as my PNG because that's what we're going to import into Rapid Resizer. Now that we have our picture saved, we're gonna go ahead and open Rapid Resizer and we're going to start a new project or upload to new project. And we're gonna go ahead and find that PNG file of our numbered picture. Once it imports, you're gonna notice right off the bat that it is very wonky. So what you're gonna do is go up to the top left where it says prepare your design to resize accurately. And this is going to allow you to rotate, crop, which cropping is the most important. It usually uh, is able to identify it for you. And then don't worry about the last step unless you uploaded a colored picture. Now we're gonna change the width and height to whatever we want it to be. So these change proportionately, usually and then you can just go ahead and print it out.